um, how many of you are actually you know, actively building a module either for the developer or just a custom module? Okay. So my name is Bono. Uh, I work for a company called Newspar. And most of my module building efforts go into something called Drupal. Uh, this is uh, Kind of cooking and the engine that in part of this program is the project slash rooms and we're just going to do anything on the side of the ones and things. Um, in a past life, I used to be a researcher and I spent a lot of time thinking about software development and technology. This is kind of where my interest in this topic. What's the problem with you can do all sorts of things, right? You can build anything. But how do you build it? And is that important? Like, like my typical experience is you come up with a problem, you say, okay, I need to solve it. And you start kind of pulling away at the thread. And that brings something else across and something else. And by the end of it, you're, you're wondering, you know, what, what should I do? What is, what is the right way? And <coughs> this, is, this is a good example because it's a very simple thing. And it has direct references to the page. So I want my model to use a JavaScript library. Right? Imagine you're you know, a new Drupal developer. There's some library you want to use. How do you do it? You search and you find something new to the documentation, adding JavaScript to your demo module. It's a PHP function, Drupal.js. It takes five parameters. You must do those of stuff. Great. But you know, you're like a good developer, you're conscientious, you want to make sure this is the right thing, right? So you search a bit more. Yeah. Uh, adding JavaScript in the model of Drupal 5. Well, maybe, maybe I want to do that. You know, maybe the first one is not the right one. Okay, it's, it sounds maybe simpler, but it's also the other one. Bit confused. Or, book library. Registered JavaScript CSS libraries associated with the model. This is maybe kind of different. Um, but it's there, you can read the library. Libraries API. Now this sounds Drupal, right? This is like take the simplest problem and abstract <laughs> that. <laughs> 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 and an API. Not even, okay. You probably want to do this, you know, the cool kids are probably doing this. <laughs> it's it's frustrating. And it, it's not it's not really a Drupal problem. I think any <coughs> framework has this problem. It's how do you do things? Right? There is there's options, but how do you choose? And that's that's what I'm trying to talk about. Okay, so what is it that we actually want to do? Build them on, right? Uh, we have Drupal, it has APIs, it has books, library functions, systems and we need to interact in some way. And we want to do that in an agile way because um, the week down the line, the requirements are going to change, customers are going to change their mind, we're going to change our mind, so all this needs to be done uh, in a way that <coughs> continues redefinement, redesign, uh, refactoring of the code, and so on. So what are we really trying to do? Take it in another step back. We're building software, right? But people have been building software for some time now. Typically, you have some sort of methodology, a set of guidelines, processes that accompany you from problem definition to solution. How many of you use a methodology? Excellent. So, you know what I'm talking about. It's, um, 
how do I do what I do? Do I just kind of start writing code? Coupled to methodology is some sort of framework, like reusable elements, underlying structure, and then you have patterns. So we've all kind of heard of uh, software engineering patterns. Um, it's proven reusable solutions to generic problems. And you need to bring all that together to create your architecture. Now, typically in Drupal, we have a framework. We even well, we actually argue at times whether it's a framework or not. But we have a framework. It's Drupal. It's not Drupal's job to provide a methodology. Um, it would be nice if kind of the community actually work in methodologies as well as just you know, more and more code and stuff. But we <coughs> typically need that. And patterns, yeah, we kind of have uh, within the Drupal world, but it's not that clear. So let's see what we can do about it. The first thing is, given that this stuff is missing and maybe what, what's out there is not the right thing, is to actually say, you know, how do I decide? How do I decide anything? You know, what are my guidelines? If I have a set of rules that are above any of this, I can apply that to the situation and I can see um, that the options available to me satisfy my set of rules and use that. It's almost a methodology. It's a way to go from a problem definition to uh, a solution. So, guidelines in Drupal. Um, again, tricky. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's it's a complex system, interlinked parts. It's. I think this is important. I would love to see more blog <coughs> posts for myself to start with, for everyone else. That's not about how do you do X specific thing, download this module, click here, uh, click there, download this, change that file, boom, you have a gallery, you have an event system. You know, those are recipes. Why, why did you do it that way? Right? It's, uh, you need more of that. Why should you build, how, you have 10 potential solutions for a gallery. How do you evaluate from an architecture point of view which one is the right one? They all show the images at the end in the same way. One approach is to say, I don't care. As long as they show the images in the correct way, I don't care how it's done. Uh, typically, software developers, any sort of builder cares. Because that's what we do. It's, it's not just we just build. It's how we build that really gets us exactly. So it's not about the recipes, it's about the principles. The first one, uh, and this, this is kind of general, obvious stuff, right? But <laughs> I think it's worth repeating. Separation of concerns. Um, put your logic in modules, put your presentation in a way that can be managed in teams, <coughs> just divide things up. Uh, along the same lines, decouple. You know, don't build like just one huge monolithic thing. Drupal does decouple in interesting ways. I mean, all these APIs is essentially decoupling. Right? You have C tools, you have views, you have rules, all the APIs. It's kind of breaking things up. So it takes us some way along that path. The other thing is consistent. Similar things should always happen and be described in the same uh, way. So this is some basic guidelines that you can use and to evaluate what's out there and decide whether uh, it's a good solution or not. If you're looking at an image gallery and you cannot see a way to kind of um, change one aspect of it, then probably it's it's not. The, the best solution. Another important issue is 
actually define what you are trying to do um, in a non Drupal specific way. So, um, I said I'm working on this module that's hotel bookings and so on. And consider these two alternative ways of describing the problem. The first one is, the hotel owner needs to be able to display a list of available rooms with their associated descriptions given an arrival and departure date. I need to get all bookable unit entities and attach a field entity reference to the new description mode so that I can then render the new description. <laughs> Most Drupal developers talk like this. <laughs> I, I, I catch myself doing this. And then, you know, whoever is listening to me is not a Drupaler. says, what? But it's so important to actually say it this way, like literally write it down. It built in it all sorts of assumptions that I'm just used to repeating day in and day out, and it doesn't allow me to challenge uh, how I should design something. A few days ago, in some blog, I don't remember, I saw uh, a little YouTube clip, and it's, um, God, I can't remember his name, Ives, uh, Apple designer, and he was asked to visit, um, what do you call it, Blue Peter? Uh, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't live in the uh, And he was evaluating designs that kids made uh, for like a rucksack. And, uh, and they were asking, you know, okay, you need to design a lunch box. How would you design this thing? Um, and the first thing he said is, you know what, actually, I wouldn't call it a lunch box because that already places constraints on it. It's like a box. <laughs> Plan to design is a box that carries large. And so I would call it, you know, something else that doesn't constrain its design in any way. And I thought that was, that was really cool. It's like very uh, clear insight into how language can, can constrain the way we think about stuff. And it's 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 similar. Uh, obviously, you can take it to extremes. Uh, maybe I don't want to call it a hotel owner. Personally, I don't know. But you see what I mean. It's this is too specific. It's too constrained to fit. So describe your architecture in generic terms first, and then in specific Drupal terms, and that allows you to map. And yeah, it allows you to better choose what Drupal ways to use subsequently. Okay, so we have some. Guidelines. Uh, <coughs> the problem with the, politics, the, the, the risk is um, you, you try to get way, way too specific. So I kept this very high level because my main objective is not like present the methodology. It's just get you to think about how you do it yourself. I spent um, yeah, way too many years in academia kind of agonizing over single words and um, you want to avoid that. So I thought, you know, what's a really simple methodology that immediately translates and just gets you thinking about how you do stuff yourself. And a simple thing would be to say, okay, let me let me break down my problem into a components <coughs> as a pattern that everyone is familiar with, which is model view control. Drupal is not exactly an MVC framework. It's kind of an MVC framework with stuff going in. Um, but there is no reason why you can't just approach a problem as model view controller, because that's actually a very good um, distinction of concerns going back to our guidelines. And just start thinking, you know, my, my model. How, how am I going to store any uh, data? Is it going to be uh, entities, custom tables, web API? What, you know, am, I, am I going to access it via web API? What am I going to do? And actually worry about that independently of anything else. And, and just think 
to what is going to fit <laughs> best. Typically, with Drupal, nowadays, it's, it's entities, right? There's not a lot of cost in defining entities, um, and you get a lot of potential benefits. It makes it um, very flexible and kind of fits with another approach of doing things. The next thing is what would be your controller? Um, so what what I try to do is I kind of view code. So go back to rules. There is a generic problem we're trying to solve, which is uh, define rooms for a hotel, define their availability, define their prices, define kind of different situations. Or how and when prices change, what you can book when. That has nothing to do with you. That's almost a self-contained uh, library component uh, that could be used anywhere. So why would I build it entirely within a Drupal module? The way I'm going to solve that problem is just by using standard old patterns that are well understood, any developer can pick them up. And do that, and then have my module, which has all the the hooking and the altering and the validation in form submissions, just instantiate objects of this model and interact with them. Sometimes it feels as if you're just um, doing busy work. You know, it's just ah, it's build an object. There. Let's do an interface in abstract class. It's so quick. Um, and sometimes it is, but, but you never know what's going to happen down the line. Um, we just finished a significant refactoring of the code where we did introduce a bunch of interfaces and then we did introduce abstract classes and uh, factories and so on. And just try uh, to make it as flexible as possible. It, it really helps. First of all, it helps you differentiate what is the real problem. Uh, I don't know, hotel booking, some kind of uh, procurement system, interaction with, a, with an API, uh, and what is a Drupal problem? You know, showing that, exposing that within Drupal. And there was a talk yesterday that was really good about explaining what the problem with Drupal is. It's not a bunch of components that you put together. It's, it's a bunch of components that are already connected. Right? And you need to figure out how to change them. But from a software engineering perspective, this top-down approach is uh, it's a challenge. Because it, it already has all sorts of opinions about how it's supposed to do things. Um, now, if you also come along and add your own stuff on top of that, and kind of mix the whole thing, it, it does make it a very complicated problem. It's better to kind of separate things and say, okay, here's my solution to my specific problem using standard all patterns. Of, no, maybe all is not your thing. Whatever is your thing, but it's separate as much as possible. And then the interaction happens in your dot module file or uh, C tools, plugins, plug and so on that interact with your code. Another thing we did that was quite interesting is um, we've separated it to the point where even within Drupal, we expose an API. So when we're getting availability data, we're actually calling a URL, getting that back as JSON, and displaying it. Uh, in our case, we're using the calendar library, but we could use anything. Maybe the, the proper Drupal way was um, to have like some sort of renderable array, uh, and then that. But that would just limit us in so many ways. Uh, in terms of this specific problem of showing data in a calendar format that actually JavaScript libraries deal with uh, typically much more effectively. 
Um, and it allows us to, again, decouple that bit of the functionality, give me some data, from the let me display that bit. Decouple it to the point where it's Drupal independent. Um, and I, can, I want this to be misconstrued as, you know, Drupal is so bad we just shouldn't uh, use it. Drupal is great. Uh, it allowed us to build this in the fastest possible way and actually we get, uh, you know, by the way, a whole CMS <coughs> with the rest of the hotel side and then we can build. So that's great. Um, but in terms of a software engineering approach for a problem, we do need to worry about how much we need to cover things. And, okay, the, the last part of uh, the MVC of this uh, view. Um, separate UI from core multifunctionality allows us to replace it. Um, um, avoid having any logic in form submit handler. It's it just shouldn't, it shouldn't be there. Uh, interact with your library, with your office, and figure out what you're supposed to do. And just don't put all your business logic there. And, it, and it's such, um, I'm pretty sure if I carefully go through um, some of our modules, there's almost certainly something in there that's business logic that should be removed from there. Because it's such a temptation. You're kind of you're building stuff and you're excited about making it work and you're writing code. Um, and it's just this one last check that if you do, you're fine. And what better place? It's a check, it's a submit handler. Let's, let's just do it there. And you know, you, you've just more tightly integrated things in it. So um, yeah. Either you're really good and you kind of avoid it from the start, or then you go through your code again and you identify these things and you have a, a, a code review with the lead or the song and just clean it up. And yeah, uh, a lot of modules do this. You have like the, the main uh, <coughs> functionality, like views and views UI, until you can switch the UI off, which is a good thing. And so you have your MVC based methodology where you, know, you describe your problem in an abstract way, uh, you then translate it down into some Drupal type of architecture, um, you've broken it down into individual components, but um, no one is perfect, right? Testing is great. How, how many people regularly write tests? How many people enjoy writing tests? <laughs> <laughs> Testing is liberating because it allows you to actually refactor and over and over again with some semblance of reliability. <coughs> The problem is, how do we test in Drupal? And there's no solution here, I'm kind of a spoiler. There's <laughs> no testing solution. Uh, a simple test. How many people use simple test? So, simple test does what it does, right? It gives you two possibilities. Web test case you know, tries to recreate uh, like a browser environment and simulate text through your site. It's it's slow, it's unreliable, um, but it, it's great that we have it because at least we have that. The the unit tests in simple test are again. Um, the, uh, do you use other frameworks like Symfony or Rails? Um, have you ever used something like PHP unit in Symfony? It's so hard if you use that to then think of Drupal tests again. Because there you can actually 
the unit test where you recreate your entire environment. You can mock objects, you can create it for stops, pass all the data, and, and just get it working. While with simple test, you can just test specific functions. And really, in a modern OO environment, you need much more than that. Another option. I, I, actually, <laughs> I like Selenium more than, uh, than a simple test and um, the project we just recently used a lot of Selenium testing because we could have anyone write the test. So with Selenium it's, it's a giant <coughs> testing environment and there's a Firefox plugin and you can just record yourself doing something write the assertions as you're doing that and then you can tie it into Jenkins and have the tests run and commit um, and you kind of at least you're not writing all that code that simple test requires which is that is busy work that is really important uh, you should need to do that so yeah Tools are not ideal, but it's better than nothing. Um, you gain all sorts of other advantages with Google in, in terms of kind of quickly getting something up and running. Uh, <coughs> so you know maybe the the drawback is that you're going to spend a bit more time actually doing testing. We we've, we've ended up in some weird situations where. Um, we really wanted to unit test some classes that uh, functionality within classes that we built, but it depended on database data. Now, um, so we needed a working environment to test that. And there was no way, the only way we found to actually have that within the module on DDO so that uh, everyone could access it is have um, print that data on screen and you use a web test case that just goes and checks that it says value is zero. That's crazy that we have to do that, but there was no other way, you know, we, we needed a, a fully functional commerce environment, a fully functional groups environment, and if you cannot mock objects, um, what else are you going to do? Print it. Like, and, and, and see what it does in an automated way. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it's what we thought, but once, once you've gone through the pain, then uh, it gives <coughs> you up later. principles throughout and think of architecture throughout and please share your, your ideas about this um, and, and write tests even though uh, it's, it's bloody uh, <laughs> That's it.